What's up guys, I'm your host Sam Neal, and welcome to another episode of the Reset Broadcast. As you might recall from a few weeks ago, Mark and Richard had a bit of an incident, where Mark ended up accidentally betraying Richard in a game of Minecraft. Well, this week they decided to settle the score once and for all in the arena. I'll explain this. So both of you guys have blocks of wood in these little chests right here, I think you have eight. You're going to start each in your respective little tunnels that I built over here, and then come out of the tunnel, grab the wood from the center, come back to the crafting block, craft your sword, and then battle from there. Are both contestants ready here? I'm ready. As uh, ready as I'll ever be. Alright, <laughs> let me get a view of the flags here real quick. Okay, three, two, one, go! Dun, 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 dun. I'm expecting you to be talking during this, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go. Oops. <laughs> Mark seems to already be beating Richard. Okay. <laughs> He's got a little bit of catching up to yeah, do. I can't remember... Uh-oh. Mark looks to have completed his sword, and... <laughs> <laughs> Boom, round one is over. Richard gets killed on the back again. Ready? Three, Ready. two, one, go! Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Mark reaches the chest first. And once again, he's off to a fast start. <laughs> Poor Richard's just having a day. <laughs> Richard got disoriented there for a little bit. Uh, I, I got the bag, sorry. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> You're taking pity on me. <laughs> Mark's putting on some showmanship. Mark, Mark, Mark! Showing off for the crowd. Oh yes, oh yes. I will. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard falls prey to the lava. So for this next round, I've changed up the arena a little bit, as you can see here, and I've walled both players off. They do not know the changes that I've made. I've given them both bows, so they are now going to battle to the death here with bows. Alright, ready? Three, two, one, go! As players begin to punch their way through their walls. Oh good, this round's working. You seem to both be getting through at about the same time. Put your marker through one. They can see the level now. If they're <laughs> And Mark takes some shots. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting his precious arrows, though. Let's see here. Richard is free. Mark is free. Oh! One hit. Come on, Richard. Come a little closer. Gave you guys a bit Ouch. of cover for this one. Whoop. Whoop. They might both run out of arrows before this round ends. Resort to blow. Oh! Headshot! <laughs> <laughs> and Mark takes home another victory. Alright, so I've changed the level again and given them yet another challenge. Are both of you guys ready? We're ready. Ready. Alright, three, two, one, go! Not even a pickaxe to try and get out of here. <laughs> uh, both players seem to be as well at the same time. <laughs> uh, well, I, see. I see what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I see it better than I did in the last few. Oh, this is taking forever. Oh, Richard's faster. computer slip up. So <laughs> 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 and Richard doesn't make it out. So I'm coming for you, Richard. Yeah, come on, in, in you come. <laughs> hey. oh, area, I see we're playing illegal. street rules now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Mark gets them anyway. <laughs> Despite despite the attempted at help from the uh, the referee. <laughs> yeah, well I tried. <laughs> oh, Richard, time out. What have I done wrong now? He <laughs> fell off the bridge. Fell <laughs> 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 off the bridge. Uh, All right, three, two, one, go. Yeah, what was that? Oh! <laughs> Mark gets you. slaughtered five times. Yeah, so Richard, what do you think about your chances in the next round here as you settle down for your nap? Oh, about as good as they've been in all the other rounds. One, begin. I can just imagine what's going to go on in this, this arena. Come on, Stone, break. Did you give Richard a glass wall? I got a wooden wall. <laughs> <laughs> this, is the, this is the pity factor. How did he even hit me with that one? This, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and Mark is trapped. I just want the stone to break. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to break now. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> oh, man. Eric got put out. See, this one's a battle. I need to get both you iron armor more often. <laughs> Richard's arrows just aren't going. You start breaking the glass. Oh, Jesus, I'm gonna grab that. <laughs> Mine just broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Lava. Sudden death. Oh, did Richard not grab his sword? No, I grabbed it because mine <laughs> broke. I didn't touch that. <laughs> Where is this all this extra lava going from? Sudden death round. Oh, oh by the dungeon. Oh no! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, three, two, one, begin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gave Richard a pickaxe. <laughs> and he still couldn't get out in time. So for the last round, we're going to do somewhat of a horde mode, so they'll actually be working together, and I almost put that in quotes because it remains to be seen how much together they'll actually work, but they'll be killing AI enemies here. Alright, three, two, one, go. <laughs> I guess the time of day kind of uh, is to our advantage at this point. Yeah, that's true. Oh, sorry, Richard. Oh, yeah, sure. Fire. <laughs> oh, they're behind us. <laughs> it's kind of fun getting to play the horde boss. <laughs> Just put a blade into the back of my head on the way by. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go. Ah, yeah. Alright. <laughs> Final oh, round, no, ready? Still there's still more. Ah, well, they'll warp away. Three, two, one, go! Oh no! No! You, there are explosions against them. It's really easy. <laughs> oh man, you guys are holding in a little better than I thought you would. Don't don't attack the zombie pigmen yet. Ow. Oh, one down. Sheridan sure slain by Jake Hamilton. Two down. <laughs> <laughs> Poetic justice right there. All right, and in the end, Mark has won an overwhelming number of rounds. In fact, all of them. <laughs> so, uh, Mark, t take the torch onto your victory. Da, 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 da. <laughs> You've already done your bridge. <laughs> what a villain. It's sort of a metaphor. I'm burning my bridges by burning his flag. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there he goes, Mark. Mark is victorious. <clears throat> any any victory words there? Words of encouragement, uh, discouragement? If you Have you learned your lesson to not team kill your allies? <laughs> I don't think I've learned anything, especially after that last one where Richard took me out. <laughs> <laughs>
all these established franchises and what a new console brings with it is new creative IPs that you know can say hey look at this we've got we're on this new console we've got great graphics and we're new we're not stale we're trying something different and you know they're coming out in the early life cycle of a new console where there's not going to be much competition and where people won't be able to fall back on the the games that they are already familiar with so yeah it's a great opportunity for people to try out new games. Why do you think they're not going to fall back on the same old games? Because when the Xbox 360 launched, you still saw the carryover. Like, Call of Duty still existed before, and it continued to exist. The Madden games crossed over. That's kind of a dumb example. But Splinter Cell, Halo, Halo, all these franchises, big franchises, the one that people think of when they think of the console, existed before this generation. So how do you think that's going to change when the next hardware comes along? It's not, to be honest. They'll be there as well. It's just that there will be a small window where new IPs can really shine and grab everybody's attention with their shiny new package. Randy, what do you think about this issue? I, I mean, I, I hear what Sean's saying, and I do agree to an extent that, I mean, it can only help better and create new IPs, but at the same time, I, I think the thing that, that you, I think his name is Yves Guillermo, was trying to say is that <laughs> graphics are what's going to help creativity, and that point I don't agree on. I think that uh, creativity, new IPs, those, those could be established and look like nothing. Um, Nate made the two examples of Minecraft and DayZ, which if you look at the games, they're not going to blow you away graphically. Um, and, you know, it's hard to say that a zombie survival is a new IP, but in a, in a way it is. But Minecraft definitely is a new IP, and, and the graphics to me, I mean, Nintendo 64 looks better. But yet it's fresh, it's new, so I don't really think it's a driving force behind it. And like Sean says, we're definitely going to always, you're going to see a new Halo on the new Xbox. You're going to see a new God of War. Um, but they're just going to look prettier. But is that going to help creativity? Well, I, I hope so. The Wii, is, Wii U is a little bit different because they're trying to introduce new stuff. So their new console is definitely going to launch uh, a bigger chance for creativity. But better graphics, I don't see it happening. Okay. So I don't necessarily think it's graphics that push creativity with consoles. I think it's more the uh, the power behind it, like the processing and the RAM and things of that nature. Uh, my example for this is Assassin's Creed. Whenever that game first came out, people had the idea for years to put a bunch of people in a, in a world and have crowd mechanics in a game, but they didn't have the processing power to do that with the PlayStation 2. So That's when that finally point. came along, that pushed creativity forward, but the graphics aren't necessarily a- at the front of that. Yeah. I think that's a that's actually a good point. I never thought about it that way, which would make sense. What Sean was saying is that uh, these new consoles will help, especially if someone has an idea and they can't they can't truly perform it. Because I think that they've been holding off doing, for your example in particular, uh, doing Ezio or not Ezio. I'm sorry, Desmond. I think they've been holding off his game until we've had the capabilities to do a full city in the future with skyscrapers and windows you can go into. Oh, I'm sorry, is Watch Dogs not just the story of Desmond? <laughs> it is, you know, they, they haven't revealed that yet. They, they, they're they going to soon, but yeah, it's Desmond. And <laughs> instead of a uh, secret hidden blade, he has an iPhone. Go when it comes to graphics and hardware, they're, they have to go hand in hand. You know, destructible environments. Being able to have destructible environments now in a first-person shooter takes away, almost takes away the, um, the strategy of taking cover, because now that's not going to fully protect you from flying bullets. So, you know, things change. And I can't wait to see what the Red Faction engine does in the next generation of consoles. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a perfect example of creativity. Okay, also, the 2K boss uh, commented recently saying something relatively similar. He believes that graphic quality is key to the portrayal of emotions. He's saying that you need to have photorealistic graphics in order to tell compelling stories and to tell stories that matter. Um, Randy, do you think that this is true? Do you believe this? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, one of the, if, when I think about it, you know, I look back on games like Final Fantasy VII. Uh, that was one of the greatest stories for me. I still have, you know, nostalgia feelings towards it. I was very engulfed in it. Look at the graphics. Go back and play it. It's, it's, <laughs> it's Locks. ugly. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I remember my uh, older stepbrother used to walk in, and he would see the cinema, and then he would see the gameplay, and he was like, they're cheating you. They're trying to make you feel like it's it's one way, it's not. <laughs> I'm going off topic. But anyways, I don't think it's nece- necessary, but then again, you know, it doesn't hurt. You look at games like uh, Heavy Rain or, or the new game that they're coming out with. Um, I forget the name of it. It escapes me. Or even uh, Mass Effect. 
Yeah, exactly. The facial expressions, the different things they can do. Um, L.A. Noir. Yeah. Like, <laughs> bingo. I mean, you can get a little bit more of a sense, and does that attract you more to the character and make you feel... It, it depends. It really depends on the story, but I'm sure, it, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have better graphics. I, I think the main focus of his argument was that, you know, in about 10 years' time, we're going to be able to produce quality graphics that are on par with, you know, movies, animation, to the point where it's almost so realistic that we can't tell the difference, except the fact that, you know, we're using maybe a, a controller or a keyboard and mouse to play the game, and that's it. That's well, screw way. realism. I'm waiting for games to catch up with Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, personally, I'm waiting for holographic technology, so... Yeah. <laughs> If they had a 16-bit hollow deck, then Sean would be perfectly happy just running around interacting with the giant pixels. And <laughs> it's Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also believe that it's more about developers needing to optimize the graphical style to portray emotion. Like, if developers are trying to give across an emotional message, they need to make sure to pick the correct format or the correct style to do so. Because you can argue that it's impossible to tell a truly emotional story with different facial features of Minecraft or DayZ, which were two of Nate's points that he brought up, because they physically do not have the technology to show facial animations. They don't even have voice moving for characters. In games like that, it, it's harder to tell those kind of stories. So yes. it, they just need to learn how to better suit the style of the game towards the story that they're trying to tell. And that, that's really a cue that any developer can learn from, to be quite honest. Games need to stop I trying to be movies and start trying to be games. Yeah, I think a good example of exactly what you're saying is uh, Journey. Have you guys played that game? It's on no. PSN. The game, game is... Game my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, the game has absolutely no dialogue. You're just a character, and you're on a journey towards a temple. But it is such a compelling story because of just the character and, like... Sean pointed out, the music. To go back to Journey, I do think that's a great example of them optimizing the graphical style, though, to tell the story that they're trying to tell. It was a beautiful art direction. Y you say that it wasn't yeah. very graphically complex, because it wasn't photorealistic, but it was a beautiful art direction. So, yeah. And that, that is very crucial to telling a story that you actually care about. Yeah, the um, game was beautiful, the sand, but you don't even see the character's face, so that whole facial expression thing kind of doesn't sit with that game. Making you feel without needing the photorealism. So exactly. basically, the uh, two gay guys full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel all the time without photorealism. Thanks for watching this week, guys. Be sure to check out Reset Transmission every Tuesday morning. Check out Press to Reset to read up all the articles and things that we talked about today. And just thanks for watching. Tell all your friends. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, tell them. No, Do yeah, it. Bye, guys. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> See you later, everyone. All right, later, guys. Alright, that's all we've got for you this week. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like us on YouTube, share us with your friends, and all that other fun stuff. Also, taking us out this week is a little montage that I put together of the staff trying to play Left 4 Dead 2. The results are quite comical because we're really, really bad at it. Enjoy. Don't worry guys, I got this. <laughs> we knew you did. <laughs> 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 What the hell is going on? Earthquake. Yeah, my screen's all shaking. Oh, shit. oh, oh, watch it. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. Charger. Coming. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. Oh. Ah, in Where's the fire. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. That's a bit of a trick, isn't it? Oh, oh shit. Oh. I guess I'm getting the med pack. <laughs> There we go. Oh, yeah. Are we sure there's a safe house over here? No. I'm from behind you, Mark. I'm down. Oh. Everyone just stay away from Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see anything and he has a chainsaw. <laughs> oh, okay, so ow, ow, running. Ow, ow, oh, ow, I have insta kill there. Eh? Where the hell did you come from? Damn! Shit. I yes, can't buddy. move. He just killed me, Clyde. And. Oh! Munch. So you how little I played this game? Is that a charger I just heard? Yep. yep. Oh shit. Yes. Oh, 
Oh, oh, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. There's whoa. a cliff right there. We are all sliding off this oh, cliff. Oh, shit. Oh, no. oh my god. Alright, shit. Oh, damn it. I lost the picture as well. Oh, is Mark oh, down or is he down? Oh god. You can get to us, so it is, yeah. Thank you, sir. Alright. Well done. Oh, oh, oh my god, man. Oh, 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 I'm a black boy. Me too. Oh, this is a good one. Yes! <laughs> 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 Bloody hell! <laughs> we made it!